49ers. Um, they needed a wide receiver, a cornerback, and a um, an offensive line help. Their win total right now is set at 10.5. Now, this is the losing Super Bowl team. Uh, typically, the losing Super Bowl team doesn't even make the playoffs the next year. Right. So, they're, they're fighting against a, a big curse, I would say. Um, and I normally believe in that too. I follow that, but I it's there's logic behind it, which is usually it's so hard to get to a Super Bowl. You've kind of went all in on a season to do that. The 49ers didn't. They were in a rebuild, and the rebuild happened about a year or two before they oh, kind of yeah. thought it was going to happen. Well, I, their their defense was so disruptive, and their running game uh, became. Such a like they didn't necessarily need the quarterback to be great like most teams do. They just needed the quarterback to be serviceable. Yes, and the offense and that won. was designed by Kyle Shanahan really showed out in spades all year last year. Yep. Um, now they only had five draft picks. They had no picks in rounds two through four. But let's go ahead and run two through first though, and that helped. Yeah, had two in the first. Uh, now they traded back up into the first, but. Um, Let's go ahead. And, they, no, they had oh, no, 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 they had to. They had to because they they traded with uh, with Indianapolis. Before, they traded forward for uh, for a first round pick for the Colts. You got it. So let's go ahead and run through those right quick. Uh, defensive lineman Javon Kinlaw from South Carolina was number one pick, number fourteen, number twenty five pick in the first round. Wide receiver Brandon Ayuk from Arizona State in round five. They got offensive tackle Colton McKivitz out of West Virginia. They got uh, tight end. Charlie Warner out of Georgia in round six. And they got, and this is a hell of a pickup, in my opinion, wide receiver Jawan Jennings uh, at pick 217 in the seventh round out of Tennessee. Now, obviously, Jennings had some behavioral issues, I guess you could say. He was suspended for a season from the Tennessee football team. Uh, When Butch Jones was there, he got readmitted and put back on the team under Jeremy Pruitt, etc. I... Talent wise, I mean the kid is unbelievable, and and I think that he has fixed his uh, his issues. So well, he's a late round flyer. If he hadn't, and, yeah. he, and he and he's an, an idiot again, it's you easy got him to in the seventh. It didn't cost you anything. This is what you should be taking instead of punters and kickers and long snappers. Yes, uh, I was a little bit surprised that they went with Ken Law at number fourteen because on the board you still had CD Lamb and you still had Jerry Judy. Uh, yeah, I, I was really wanting them to take one of those two guys. Um, I think they fell into the idea of, okay, Ken Law is really, really high on our this vertical guy's board. A, this guy is a monster. Yeah. I mean, he, so, he really is a beast. Sorry, the horizontal board. Uh, he's he's unbelievable. He's He had to be really, really high on their board. And I think they fell into the trap of, hey, there are a ton of really good wide receivers in this draft, and we yep. know that we can get one at our 25th pick. As opposed so, to waiting around, like it's there, supposed to do everything. There were reports from um, one of the guys from the NFL Network was on like the the Zoom call or whatever with so a couple of these different programs allowed like one reporter to be on the call with them while they went through their whole draft and watched them. So one of the guys from the NFL Network was like that. I don't, God, I wish I'd remember the guy's name. I give him credit for it. He said that listening to Lynch and and uh, and Kyle talking that uh, Brandon Akun was their number one receiver. Brandon Ayuk, really? Ayuk, yeah, Ayuk, sorry. He said that they had him ranked and graded higher than everyone else on the board, and he said that's something that you see teams say publicly after they've taken the guy, but he said, I'm telling you, when that draft pick came up, they knew they weren't taking any of those top tier guys because they didn't have them graded at that place. And they thought he's going to be there with our next pick and we'll just take him then. Let's, let's replace the defensive guy that we traded away for a rookie deal contract guy we think can be just as good. That's a, that's a valid point. So you Law, save a Ken shitload of be, money financially yeah. To replace the position you just replaced, and they don't think, you know, maybe after a year of learning the game in the NFL a little bit, they've gone backwards at all, and they still got their number one guy. I thought that was a little strange. It makes me worried because I don't think 
uh, Ayuk is is anywhere close to those guys. Um, and 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 I like I said, I I had T Higgins above him too that went in the second behind him. Um, but it's kind of hard to argue with Kyle because he's done this for a long time. I think it, maybe he's grading based on potential. Like it, I I don't I don't or, or maybe it's because you know Brandon Ayuk played with Manny Wilkins, you know for however long. Uh, you know, exactly what kind of quarterback play was he getting? And obviously, you see what can happen when you don't have a lot of competency at the quarterback position, as we talked about with Juju Smith-Schuster, right? His numbers absolutely dropped. Well, yeah. maybe Brandon Ayuk is just as good as Juju Smith, and this is just talking. That's right. But maybe he is insanely good. I mean, we got to figure out how Kyle got there. But yes. I'll tell you. I wonder how he grades. Any- any other OC head co- offensive minded head coach general manager does this pick, I'm really questioning them. Kyle is the Kyle and Bruce Arians are the two offensive minded coaches that I kind of just trust if they say we have this guy graded as this and we think everybody else is wrong. Um, but that was the logic behind how they got the first because I wanted them to take CD. Or yeah. Judy, you know that. I mean, you've had that conversation. Oh yeah. Um, and and when they took Ayuk, my first thought was, I uh, just disappointment. Just man, that sucks. This is this is not even close to one of the guys that I thought they I wanted to see in this offense. But 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 I could easily be wrong. I'm kind of hoping wrong. Uh, McKinnon jumped in. He said, so which is the problem here? Shanahan coaching in big games or Garoppolo's playing big games? There's obviously a shortcoming somewhere in that system. Listen, listen, listen. They, they lost in the, the Super Bowl. In Atlanta, okay? Like, he's a, you're, This is a guy that was butthurt because his Falcons had a massive comeback, and your head coach had a whole hell of a lot to do with how they ran that offense, all right? Not Kyle. Yeah. Yeah, I think I – yeah, I agree. Now, I mean, I obviously, Kyle, there, there were issues last year. But, and losing to the Chiefs, losing to Patrick Mahomes is nothing to to hang your head about. And you just got beat, all right? You yeah. got beat by somebody who is a god at football. Yeah. I mean, he was just he was just better. That's all nothing you can do about that. He was just better. This is not a big game collapse because Aaron Rodgers came in and played a big game, and they beat their ass. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, they, they got to the Super Bowl. Like at what point is that like a And they a weren't even supposed to be anywhere near the Super Bowl yet in this rebuild. Not if yet. If you said two years ago that this team was going to play in the Super Bowl in two years, but and let's say get your ass whipped. Just get beat like a drum. Like don't even deserve to be there. Every 49ers fan would be like, take it. Yeah. Take it. McKinnon, in two years it's going to happen, take it. McKinnon said, uh, worst night of my life on a multitude of levels, talking about that Falcons. Patriots game, yeah. One of the most frustrating nights of my life. I, I can't say it was a great one. It, uh, yeah, I can understand that from it your perspective. It was a great two hours, but it was a terrible five to six hours. 